Assalamualaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the Islamic Shahada channel. How are you doing today? We pray that you are always healthy and don't forget to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In recent years, the phenomenon of Islamophobia in India has become increasingly worrying. One of the factors is the widespread spread of hoaxes about Islam overtaking Hinduism as the largest religion in the country. This situation triggers social tensions and divisions among the diverse Indian society and causes concern for the Muslim community who feel threatened and unsafe. India, a country predominantly Hindu, holds the intriguing fact that Islam is the second largest religion by number of followers there. No less than 204 million people, or about 14% of India's population, were Muslims in 2019. The entry of Islam into India is a fascinating historical fact, yet there are several historical versions that attempt to explain how Islam first entered India. Some historians state that Islam began to spread in India during the reign of Caliph Umar bin Khattab between 634-644 CE. Another version suggests that the Umayyad dynasty was the first to introduce Islam to India. Regardless of the history of Islam's entry into India, Islamophobia is increasingly rampant in the country. Currently, for the fourth consecutive year, India faces serious challenges to religious freedom affecting its religious minorities. The prominent United States Independent Commission, USCIRF, has just recommended placing India on a black list of countries that worsen religious freedom. According to USCIRF, the condition of religious minorities in India deteriorated throughout 2022, leaving a big question mark for the international community about the future of religious freedom in a country that is home to a variety of religious beliefs. As a result of escalating Islamophobia in India, numerous cases of discrimination against Muslims have occurred in recent years. Examples of Islamophobia in India include cases like the hijab ban in schools, justified as not being an essential Islamic practice. Secondary school staff in Udupi, Karnataka, refused entry to hijab-wearing students, citing dress code regulations. Additionally, the burning of the Azizia Mosque and Madrasa during the Hindu festival of Ram Navami occurred. The Azizia Madrasa, a well-known Islamic religious school in Bihar Sharif, was destroyed by Hindutva mobs in Bihar Sharif, Nalanda district, eastern India. More distressing, over 4,500 Islamic books, including copies of the Quran present in the madrasa, were burned. The mob at the time chanted Jai Shri Ram and other provocative slogans. They then threw stones and poured gasoline on the mosque, the madrasa, and several neighboring houses. Another case of Islamophobia came from a Hindu priest named Yati Narsinghanand. This Hindu priest angered Muslims worldwide with his statements of hate speech against Islam. Recently, the Hindu right-wing movement called for a boycott of Muslim-owned businesses in India. Krishna Gurjar, a speaker from the Hindu right-wing group Bajrang Dal, issued an ultimatum to local businesses to fire Muslim employees. The ultimatum was delivered during a demonstration in New H, Hansi Town, in Hisar district, on August 2nd last year. What happened in India is truly tragic. Even in a private school in Uttar Pradesh, a teacher ordered students to slap a Muslim student. Human rights groups warn that racial crimes and violence against Muslim minorities in India have been on the rise since Prime Minister Narendra Modi took office in 2014. Uttar Pradesh has been governed by the Hindu Nationalist Party, Bharatiya Janata Party, BJP, since 2017. Indeed, people are very fortunate to live in a country that possesses religious diversity and the precious freedom of worship. This is not only a valuable asset for such countries, but also a heritage that must be preserved and cherished. By upholding tolerance, harmony, and religious freedom, people can continue to build their nation strong and harmonious. The phenomenon of Islamophobia and racism is a complex issue in India that needs to be deeply scrutinized. 
Despite challenges like Islamophobia and racism in India, many Indians still choose to undergo their religious conversion and embrace Islam with strong conviction. Islamophobia or racism in India does not hinder guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh Muhammad Dia ur Rahman was a successful convert who became a professor at the Islamic University of Medina. In 1943, he was born Banka Lal to a Hindu family in Bilaria Ganj village, Azamgar, India. As reported by the Saudi Gazette, this man began to be interested in the teachings of Islam as a teenager. His interest in monotheistic religion started from his habit of reading many books. Sheikh Muhammad Dia ur Rahman Azmi once led the Hadith faculty at the Islamic University of Medina. After retiring, the scholar, often spelled as Zia ur Rahman or Zia ur Rahman, served as an Imam at the Prophet's Mosque in 2013. In July 2020, the scholar passed away. Param Jat Singh, an Indian YouTuber, announced that he had become a Muslim and a convert after seeking the truth about Islam. Param Singh, a famous and successful content creator, hails from Punjab and is a Hindu who respects all religions. However, Param Singh admitted that he previously had a wrong perception of Islam, associating it with terrorism and extremism. Balbir Singh, an Indian man involved in the demolition of the Babri Mosque in India in 1992, has now embraced Islam. Singh was one of a large group of Hindu activists from the ultra-nationalist Hindu Parishad who destroyed the Babri Mosque on December 6, 1992, in Ayodhya, India. Now Balbir Singh is known as Muhammad Amir. He married a Muslim woman and runs a school to spread Islamic teachings to a wide audience in Hyderabad. He has also built 90 mosques so far with his colleague Yogendra Paul. Hema Malini and Dharamendra both decided to convert to Islam after conflicts with their previous partners. At that time, they decided to convert to Islam together. Hema Malini is known as a producer and director. A.R. Rahman, this man decided to convert to Islam at the age of 23. Previously, he was born into a Hindu family with the name A.S. Dilip Kumar. When he converted, he also brought along his family members. He is a singer and music composer from India who has won an Oscar. My family was isolated, and when the concept of Sufism influenced me, I began to believe in Islam, he said. Yuvan Shankar Raja, well known in various music for Tamil films, is also a composer for soundtracks and a songwriter. However, after the death of his mother, he decided to convert to Islam. Previously, he had read and studied the Quran for about two and a half years. Feeling connected, he then decided to become a Muslim. Mahesh Bhatt, the father of longtime Indian actress Aliya Bhatt, decided to convert to Islam when marrying Sony Razdan. He is a well-known director and film producer in India. Amrita Singh, born into a Sikh family, was very popular in the 80s and 90s. Then, after marrying actor Saif Ali Khan, she decided to convert to Islam. However, a few years after marriage, they decided to separate. But now, Amrita Singh remains steadfast in her faith as a Muslim. Sharmila Tagore, one of the highest paid actresses in the Bollywood industry, converted to Islam out of love for the famous cricketer Mansoor Ali Khan. After marrying, she decided to become a Muslim convert and changed her name to Aisha Sultana. These are some of the converts from among artists and important figures who have chosen to embrace Islam. However, there are many other converts whose stories we cannot share in this video. Even from among the most popular Indian film artists, such as Nagma, Monica, Mamta Kulkarni, Sana Khan, Nargis Fakhri, Zubaydah Begum, Anu Agarwal, Ayesha Takia, and many more. That's all for this video. We hope it can be an inspiration for Muslims everywhere in strengthening their faith and piety, as well as in their daily worship. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. See you in the next video. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.